Good evening, fellow geeks. Welcome to another episode of Icewind Dale Rhyme of the Frost Geeks. Playing with us tonight, we have Chase as Haskell, M as Quill, Matt as Stew Drinker, and Ian as Moon Eye. We uh, had a really fun session last week. We got to see Vinny and Ajira back in action, have a little throwback session, a uh, big dragon brawl. So that was pretty cool. Um, and now we're here to pick up the pieces and see what comes after. But before we dive into that, some quick call outs. We are using the system and setting of Dun 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 Dungeons and Dragons 5th edition by Wizards of the Coast. And we are playing through their module, Icewind Dale Rhyme of the Frost Maiden. This is unsponsored fan content. You can also find a lot of the maps and tokens that we're using tonight over on the Rhyme of the Frost Maiden bundle on Roll20. So check it out. Uh, if you would like to participate in the stream tonight, you can interact. You can strengthen the heroes, strengthen the villains, do all kinds of fun things. You can type exclamation point engage if you don't know how to do that. You can gift hero points, villain points, blessings, items, things like that. Um, I'm seeing a report of no audio from wombat fuzz i hear audio okay. i hear audio as well okay well hopefully wombat, that's just you and you can get it figured out soon <laughs> i hear boomer yeah is that audio I, yeah, is that the audio did we find it boomer it's boomer <laughs> um okay really quick announcement before the stream i think chat should know that i did have taco bell for dinner today so i'm running on taco Be taco bell fuel Tonight. Can I can I also say something that I think chat should know? Sure. My AC is broken, as is M's, because we're in the same residence. I was going to also announce hot. that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so uh, forgive us if people are, uh, you know, dabbing their brows, getting a little we're, glisten we're not, on their faces. We're not role-playing Icewind Dale. <laughs> yeah, not tonight. Sense. Not tonight. <laughs> not in this dead heat. <clears throat> um, okay, so... Like I said last week, the group flew from the Goliath's home back to Ten Towns to try and intercept the great Chardolin dragon sent out from the Dwergar stronghold in the Spine of the World Mountains. They set up their standoff in Kaer Dineval at the castle of the Cult of the Black Knights. Uh, with help from some old friends, Ajira and Vinny, they took the dragon down, though victory had its own steep costs that night in the form of many civilian lives as well as some significant property damage uh, but our heroes all made it through and even managed to save quite a few townsfolk along the way so focus on the positive right and of course they took down the dragon before it flew off to any of the other towns in 10 towns <clears throat> and most importantly tori what's the most important thing I don't know. I'm so disappointed. Ajira lit her heart fire. Oh, Ajira lit her heart fire. That is very important. Yes. And Ajira went uh, off with the heart of the dragon to go help Amarok, the small boy who was sick. And Vinny continued on his way to the other 10 towns uh, to find some more hungry ten towners in need of some haskellets his new specialty <clears throat> however uh you guys stayed behind at, at the castle at caridin of all uh it's been i don't know maybe three four five days uh just the town is regrouping sort of taking stock of things after the devastating attack um and you guys, you know, just sort of licking your wounds, recovering, forming a game plan of what's of what's coming next. <clears throat> so uh, we also leveled up. You guys also leveled up. Um, and I thought we could give a little glimpse at some of the cool stuff you guys picked up uh, in the nether, in the, in, on seventh level, seventh level, right? You guys are at. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, so let's start with Haskell. Uh, you have had these few days of kind of more or less time to yourself, which is probably the first time in a while that you like haven't had some pressing issue to attend to. Uh, so how does Haskell spend his time? 
what uh, what new thing does he learn? Where are we at? Like you guys are at what's the, our living situation right you now. You are you are at the castle of the Knights of the Black Sword. Okay, we each have our own rooms here. Um, no, uh, I'm not expecting you to remember this, but you guys kind of all bunk together in one of the towers. Um, okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You care if I pull somebody into like a little scene with me here? Go for it. Yeah. So, Stew Drinker, you'd probably be wandering the castle halls one day here, and then uh, you would just see this bright flash of purple light and then Haskell just appear right in front of you probably just like slams like right into your your stomach because that's probably about as tall as he gets to or your or your leg you're you're very tall yeah <laughs> <laughs> uh, he's gonna fall over on his back oh I did it I did it stew drinker what happened I was over there now I'm over here whoa you you move really quick it wasn't moving. I traveled a great distance. But yeah. not with moving. That part's important. I'll be going. I'll be going home soon, I think. Oh. Not yet, though. Okay. That was really cool. Yes. Maybe I'll teach you someday. I'd, I'd like that. It's probably going to be a long teaching, though. You can't even make anything glow, can you? Uh, and he'll like pull out a sword and just you, you see him just scrunch up his eyes. No, yeah, that's, not, yeah. not doing it right. We'll work on it. Start with practicing your singing. Uh, oh, okay. Every day, thirty minutes. How how do I start? He's gonna slowly back away. 30 minutes, and then his eyes are going to flash purple and he'll disappear. <laughs> <laughs> I took greater invisibility and dimension door. Just what we need. <laughs> 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 if I, I was thinking, you know what, what? You know what Frost Geeks is missing? More Haskell antics. We really, <laughs> really need, invisible we really Haskell, need I mean, that. Come on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, okay, we just saw Stu Drinker, so why don't we jump to you? And uh, why don't you give us a little peek at what Stu has been up to? So, um, Stu Drinker, uh, a little shaken at having beat on his brother for the entire combat. Um, he's changing his path a little bit, recognizing that maybe focusing on himself, on just trying to be as strong as possible, um, physically isn't necessarily the the right path, at least the, the same path that he's gone down. And so he's trying to be a little bit more controlled, a little bit more, um, like, uh, I, I'd say more, rather than brute strength, a little bit more finesse. And so he's decided to take a little, a little stroll down fighter lane um, specifically having seen, uh, seen Vinny, um, having the idea initially with fishing, but also, um, with that brilliant maneuver that Vinny had done a atop the dragon, redirecting the strike, though not quite as powerful as that, um, Stu Drinker has taken the, uh, fighter maneuver bait and switch. So then um, he can switch positions with an ally um, and hopefully get them to safety. Very cool. That's very fitting for Stu Drinker, I think. Um, okay, before I forget, we have some blessings coming in. Quill, oh, you want to reroll? I'll reroll that for uh, Haskell. I rolled the Charm of Fire for you. Would you like a re-roll? No, oh, that's beautiful. Okay. And it's my own weapon. Sorry, Stew Drinker. <laughs> well, I have re-rolled, and you've gotten the charm of luck. Thank you, thank you. And then we have some items. So uh, at, while you're practicing your uh, invisibility, Haskell, um, you... Uh, 
turn the corner and you feel you feel like no one knows you're there you know i i imagine haskell probably practiced by just sort of like slinking through the castle and being very pleased with himself when nobody noticed anything at all Uh so you feel nobody's noticed you and but then you see this bottle right in your path and it's placed just so that you think it's unmistakable that whoever put it there meant it for you and you have bottled whale song yeah i picked that up right after i finished harassing thube oh i didn't yeah okay (laughs) there you go (laughs) and then uh stew drinker you come back uh after a long day of training and see nestled on your pillow a little twinga cookie just for you uh and then finally um in case you didn't see it moon eye there has been a request for random character facts so maybe i'll get i'll buy you some time and you can think of that and maybe work that in with your uh level up little explanation okay uh quill i'll i'll sort of participate in this one a little bit um but you it's been we'll say two days since the attack and you you're you're in your office the the office uh that you and avarice sort of share and kick thube out whenever you feel like uh so you're you're in your office when there is a knock on the door um and instantly the door like becomes coated in frost And as you open it, I assume what you do. Uh, so I think that Quill will sit back, hmm. look at the frost growing, and uh, she'll actually like summon a motive fire, just like with produce flame, and have it hovering in her hand, ready and waiting as her chair slides back, scraping against the stone flooring. And she'll stand, look towards the door and demand to know who was on the other side. A messenger from the master. Intrigued, uh, Quill will extinguish her flame, take a quick step forward and pull open the door. You see uh, an ice devil, which I should have grabbed a cool picture, but I don't have one off the top of my head, but... um, Pay me a word picture. What does this ice devil look like? So it's got like, actually, it looks a bit like the little ice elementals you guys have fought previously with the like the long peaked nose and just the really sharp, jagged, pointed features. Uh, Everything looks sharp to the touch and, of course, cold. Um, It looks it appears to be made just entirely of ice. And uh, except it's bigger than those little elementals. And it's probably about Haskell sized, I'd say. So huge. <laughs> huge, giant. It lurches into the room as you open the door. Of course, come sit down. Uh, it flutters up on some icy wings and snaps its fingers and from like a little swirl of of, uh, frost, there forms a translucent piece of parchment that feels cold to the touch. And it says, the master has noticed your good performance and wishes to strike a deal with you. I am interested. Let me see this parchment leaves it in the air and kind of flutters back a couple feet. Quill takes a step forward and takes the parchment in her hands. Um, Even to her skin, it's icy to the touch, which has always felt a tad cooler since she's turned blue. Um, And she'll take a quick read over this this contract, I'm assuming this is what this is. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. This is uh, basically a pact between you and Levistus, giving you access to some more direct power in exchange for your devotion and service in his name. 
Mm. That is interesting. For a moment, she considers asking if there is a catch. But she's not very sure if she cares right now. Uh, she'll go ahead and snatch a quill off of the desk, dip it in ink, and scrawl her name across at the bottom. As the ink touches the parchment and, and you leave behind your signature, it freezes over uh, and crackles on the parchment. The devil laughs uh, to itself and then flies back over, snaps its fingers again in the parchment, like furls itself up and disappears into frost. And uh, it says, be seeing you then. Quill lets it go without a word, but when she's sure it's gone, she gives a slight shiver. I hope not. That was an ugly thing. <laughs> All right, and uh, mechanically, M, do you maybe want to explain yeah. what that is for Quill? So I thought that it would be really fitting if Quill multiclassed into Warlock, since she's really been treating Levistus kind of like a patron, and uh, Tori gave me the A-OK, -okay, so hair for some Eldritch Blast. Oh. Pact of the Fiend. Yeah. Yes, very cool. So good. Um, all right, and last but not least, Moon Eye, what have you been doing over this little break time? Moon Eye is going to take the time uh, away from the group and leave the fortress and go out into the, the snow and have some time to himself to focus and speak with his goddess. Uh, where he, uh, first of all, breaks down a little bit in tears over what happened with his brother. He's upset by what happened with Stew Drinker. He's also angry, though, and he's going to unleash some of that anger with his magic and uh, his weapons. He smashes things, and that causes the goddess to kind of pay attention to him since she senses how angry he is uh, and he's going to touch on with her his past and the fact that uh his mentor in this is human his physical mentor not his spiritual animals um when he was hurt by that person he did something to them that he is not proud of, um, really embarrassed by, uh, and upset that he did it. And he's concerned that he will, that desire of revenge and vengeance kind of flows in him. He has it for his father. He, he had it for his mentor. He's afraid he's going to have something like that come up with his brother. Um, so he has time of torn, but in the talking with his, the goddess, uh, she helps calm and center him a little bit. May I, may I play yes, a little bit? You may. Yes. <laughs> Can I play this game? <laughs> yes, of course. Um, I I think. Uh, oh my! The is it Atka, the elk? Is that yes. what you call the elk? Uh, yep. I'll say during this this time of meditation and reflection, af sort of after you've let the anger and everything out, uh, Atka comes trotting calmly up to you um, and says, there is great darkness, Moon Eye, in yes. and around you. There was darkness around and within all of us. Uh, I know that mine is showing stronger. You know how I hurt my mentor when he made me look foolish and, and harmed me. And my brother harmed me not by his choice at all, but I'm, I feel some anger towards him. 
the past. I have not been able to let go of our father. I'm afraid I'm not going to let go of my anger with my brother. The past is unchangeable, yet many faced, Moon Eye. It is best to focus on the herd before you instead of the one that has already passed. That does not. Those are good words. There is still darkness in everything, as you say, but there is also light, and the light must shine in balance with the darkness. One cannot overtake the other. Do you understand this? Yes, I know. I do. We all live in the twilight where the two touch. The darkness in your friends grows. You must be the light to shine in balance. I will be. I promise you that. Uh, Atka will nod and uh, then like move up and just sort of rest their like forehead against you and then turn to go. Thank you, Atka. You are a true friend. All right, anything? And meditate for a bit more. Well, he is going to, when he gets back, um, he is going to uh, cast a spell on himself to go completely uh, invisible and uh, sneak up on Haskell. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, he'll be so impressed. Come he's up behind him. He's probably like already like pranking Thube somewhere. <laughs> I'll kneel down. Wind bag. What? You are not the only one who can go invisible now. I thought the voices were done. I haven't heard them in days. Chuckle and walk off. Still invisible. Why do you sound like Moon Knight? Stop imitating my friends. Wander off. That's great. Perfect. All right. So uh, <clears throat> you guys pass a few days like this. Um, when uh, one day you see a griffin uh, flying in the air your direction toward the castle um you see a goliath uh land and dismount and you recognize quan the monolith um and she will she'll come to the castle gate and ask to to speak with with you guys The, and the, the cultists will oblige. They'll at least round you up and let you know that she's there. I will comply. <laughs> so as you gather outside the gate, uh, she looks very, she looks very happy, like deeply joyful. Um, and you, I mean, you traveled with her for several days, you know, she's very stoic and serious, but she, and she still has that seriousness, but she does look very uh, like she's been given new life. Like her heart fire has been lit. <laughs> and she's on a griffin? She was, yeah, she's dismounted and, and is like holding the, the, the uh, reins. Hey, what happened to the griffins? They're still there. Okay. <laughs> Chase is like, all right, you let me keep my griffin. <laughs> I bonded with that thing. <laughs> um, so she steps down and, and steps up to you and tells you the tale of the Sky Tower Shelter Goliaths and the Worm Doom Crag Goliaths teaming up and storming the stronghold of Zardarok Sunblight, the Dwergar conqueror, would-be conqueror of Ten Towns. Uh, she 
paints a grand word picture of the epic battle, how they toppled the forces, drove them back underground and destroyed what was left of the forge. They, uh, with, the, with the successful raid, the Goliath tribes forged their new alliance of peace and everyone back at home is in very good spirits. They agreed, uh, and she, this line sticks out to you, Moon Eye. She says that the chieftains agreed that the past is both unchangeable and many-faced, and that it is better to focus on the herd before you instead of the one that has already passed. And uh, <clears throat> as a gift of gratitude from the newly united Goliath clan, the Sky Tower Shelter tribe has agreed to donate the griffins to your group and allow you to keep them uh, and train and bond with them as you will. The Worm Doom Crag Goliaths promise to carve your story and names into the bones of their great dragon skeleton that sits outside of their cavern, which Moon Eye and Stu Drinker, you know, is basically the highest honor that they could possibly bestow. And it was just Moon Eye and Stew Drinker they're talking about carving? No, you guys. You, your, your group. That is quite But with, with Moon Eye and Stew Drinker's names at the top. <laughs> <laughs> which one? Which one's which the one's top at the top? <laughs> Probably Stew Drinker. Yes! <laughs> <laughs> He's gonna stand with a little extra pride. <laughs> She also mentions that they managed to capture Zardarok Sunblight, the leader of the Dwargar, for questioning, but he refused to cooperate. This she looks a bit troubled at and explains that instead, uh, instead of cooperating, his eyes burned with a purple light and he started raving in a language that none of them understood for several moments before falling unconscious and then dying soon after. Well, that is troubling. Hmm. If Haskell was ever going to die, I think that is the way he would go. You wish. My death will be much more dramatic and dignified than that. Oh, it is not a wish. It was merely amusing. Hm. So naive, Quill. Has the carving on the dragon bones already begun? Well, your story is not yet finished, but yes, it is underway. First, it will begin with the tale of the forging of the new piece. So it takes a while before they get to the names. Um, I haven't checked personally on the progress of the carvings. Is there some thing you wish me to attend to? If you can get to it before they put my name on there, perhaps leave it off. If you... Why do you not wish to be included? It's but... not out of disrespect. I have made pacts with many gods. And I believe this may conflict with one or two. Writing on the bones of a deceased creature of such great magnitude. If if you wish this, it will be so. I'll make sure of it. My legacy is larger than words carved into bone. One part of your legacy at least will live on in the happy generations of Goliath children to come. Well, for that we have... Moon Eye and Stew Drinker to think. They put aside their differences before any of you. If they could not have seen past foolish rivalries, then none of this would have happened. This is true. It takes just one to move the masses, and in this case, two brothers. Well, I am very glad to have found you. I know this certainly was not the object of your quest, but I thought it would please you to know that I have regained my honor within the clan. You had never lost it. They were being fools. She smiles uh, and places her massive paw on your shoulder uh, warmly, and um, she'll she'll stay for the I don't know dinner or whatever, and and you guys regale each other with great epic battle stories um, before she flies off the next day. <clears throat> and. Uh, all, during this whole time, Avarice has been deep in her books, Quill, and for anyone else who's 
who cares, but probably mostly Quill would pay attention to that. Um, she's been very closely researching the bits of Chardolin that uh, you guys gathered from the dragon and, and the town sort of cleaned up. And trying to explore that path that you suggested uh, before the, or after, during, I don't know, sometime during last session uh, about maybe turning this into a way to influence more people in the name of Levistus. Um, and finally, she's like I said, she's been heads down for several days and she finally calls you all together, which is maybe a little new. She usually only talks to Quill about these kinds of things, but she requests all of your presence in the shared office. <laughs> Uh, to gather together to talk about what she has found and the things to come. Is anyone, aka Haskell, going to put up a stink and not go? To talk to Avarice? Yes. He's definitely going to go talk to Avarice. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, I guess before uh, I, I want to get a little idea I didn't ask about this quill, but how have things been with you and Avarice in the in the few days post battle? She's been pretty busy with researching, but have you tried talking to her? Have things been kind of distant? Uh, she understands that Avarice is a nerd and she is letting Avarice have her space to be like working on studying. Um, Quill's actually spending her most, most of her time with the final Eric, uh, teaching Eric uh, random things, uh, just coaching Eric along, making Eric help her with anything that she needs help with. Hey, didn't Eric die? No, I have no, one, one survived. <laughs> oh, right. There was a lot of Eric's. There were a lot uh, of Eric's. Most of the Eric's died. Okay. Yes. All but one Eric died. So <laughs> I'm spending the days that I, the time I have left. Turning Eric into a minion. Turning Eric into a minion. Cool. Like yeah. Mr. Meeseeks up in here with this Eric. <laughs> <laughs> Eric is very, I, well, okay. Is, is his name actually Eric? It is now. Okay. And he's willing to accept that. I don't know. I'm, his name maybe wasn't Eric before it this. Wasn't, but, it was definitely not yeah, Eric before. But <laughs> you've insisted on calling him Eric and he yeah. is happy to oblige. Um, he is a true zealot and um, believes himself to be chosen for a, a path of great glory in the name of Levistus since he was the one spared from your mm -hmm. uh, from your troop. Yeah. And so and she and, thinks the same thing. Yeah. And he gets to train under like a great servant of Levistus who clearly has, uh, you know, his ear. And so he, he's just floored by this and is willing to do anything. Quill probably ran down after she became, like, she signed her contract to go tell Avarice, realized that Avarice was busy, and instead went and told manservant Eric <laughs> about this, this great honor. So yeah, they've been, they've been getting along quite well. Cool. Okay. Uh, well, Avarice calls you all together in the office, and you see her gargoyles uh as you guys arrive her gargoyles are arranging seats in the room to make sure that there are chairs for all of you and she looks at quill and like nods at the chairs and like huh as if to say like see Ma like making an effort yeah <laughs> she doesn't praise him in front of other people but there's that little like proud look in her eye Welcome. I'm so glad all of you could spare time in your busy schedules to come. Oh, hang on. Before I launch into this, because I know I'm going to forget, there's a blessing for Stu. So I'll roll that really quick. You get the charm of the star. Would you like a reroll, or do you want to keep that one? It, gi Ooh. it gives you a bonus to save against magic. Oh, yeah. I'll, I'll keep that one. Okay. <clears throat> Excellent. 
before we begin, is there anything my gargoyles can get you? Refreshments, drinks, or Thub for that matter, I'd be happy to send him on an errand. If you can send Thub on the errand, I'll take a drink. Very good. Make it a complicated one. One that's down in the cellar. I always do. <laughs> Stew drinker, moon eye, tranquility, anything for you? I am fine. I am fine. I am quite curious why you have called us here. Well, you've proved yourselves quite competent, if I'm being honest, even more so than I initially believed. And while you haven't produced many results on the front of my particular vein of research, you have been very serviceable in many other ways. So I thought at time to treat this more as a partnership and lay my cards on the table. It's about time you lay your cards on the table. That is literally exactly what I just said. But thank you for repeating for emphasis, of course. I didn't mention the partnership, did I? Haskell, mind your manners, lest the gods mind them for you. Her eyes linger on you, Haskell, for just a few moments longer than uh, would be normal. And she kind of smiles to herself. He smiles right back, big old grin. Anyway, in case you haven't noticed the wreckage outside, the people of Ker Dineval are quite beaten down. They need something to believe in now that their city has been destroyed and, well, many of their numbers have been lost. She glances at Quill. I believe that Levistus can help be their salvation. Now, I know the three of you have no love for the great master. That is not lost on me. I'm not a fool. You However, say three. Why do you say three? I'm sorry. Are you blind? Did you not notice the pigment of your companion's skin? The blue, it's clearly a sign. Askel's going to look at Quill. Raise an eyebrow. She's just looking at Avarice, thinking, what have you done? <laughs> you love Levistus, Quill. The love does not matter, because we can all find a common goal here. That's so exactly what you want to hear your girlfriend say, by the way. Sorry, continue. I realize the part of this that might interest you more is there may be a way to stop this everlasting winter. I have mentioned to Quill previously, and I am now doing so to you, that there is a frozen city, a city, I should say, frozen in the Regged Glacier. It is a city of ancient Netherese origin. They are people who had unsurpassed magical abilities, more powerful than a wish spell, even. Nobody on this plane has such power anymore. That's how they made their city float. That is until it crashed into the ground eons ago, where it froze over. The way into the city is sealed off by a frozen waterfall that has not opened during this entire time. But the Codicile of White, a book that the followers of the Frost Maiden are able to craft it's said to be able to open any passageway through ice. We need to get this Codicile of White and access this frozen city. Myself for the glory of Levistus, of course, and you to find massively powerful weather-changing magic and more. This name is familiar. Codicile of White. Did you not send asterisk after this? Oh, that dawdling fool. Yes. I'm afraid I 
have not previously had any leads on where to find such an artifact, so I took the approach of quantity over quality. Asterisk was one of several failed adventurers, unfortunately. I see. How many have you sent after this book? Those willing to seek it. I have not forced anyone against their will. I merely made promises that were appealing. They did not live up to their end of the bargain. How many did you appeal to go after this book? Does it really matter? I don't keep a tally in the back of my journal, if that's what you're asking. Yes, of course. Why would one keep tabs on the number of souls they've sent to their death? That would be too human, wouldn't it? I do not know that all of them died. I just know that none of them have come back with the codicil of white. Oh, they're probably fine then. Perhaps they chickened out and went and sought a warm drink in a warm tavern elsewhere. Because those are so plentiful in this frozen hell. I'm sorry, are we are we now um, on the discussion of talking body counts? No, of course not. What we want to know is how trustworthy your information is now. I have spent many months researching this. I'm quite confident. The Arcane Brotherhood sent me up here for this exact purpose, the city, as I said. Who knows what powerful magic items or spells might be locked in such a place. And the great Lord Levistus agrees with my quest. All right. How do you all feel about going on this journey? I think we need to go on this journey. I don't think we need a partnership with her. What are you two anyways? He's going to gesture to Quill and Avarice. We are none of your business, Haskell. Well, we're talking about partnerships, and I've been traveling with you for the entirety of my stay here. So I think it is. If she is your lover, I will make an exception for a friend, Quill. If she is just stringing you along and using you, which is what I'm kind of getting the feel for, then I have no interest in working with her. I am just so amused at the remarks coming out of this one's mouth. The caster of mental magics and uh, that sort. I just think it rather funny that you would be suspicious and judgmental of someone using another person. Yes, I cast mental magic. That seems I to be your MO. don't use people with it. Mm. I get people out of the way. Yes, of course. I also don't do it to my lovers. Who has said anything about me doing that? Or anything about Nobody us has. being That's lovers why I'm for asking. that reason? <sighs> this is tiresome. I merely called you here because I thought perhaps we could get a better idea of what we would be going into if you looked into that tower that Dazan found out in the snow. I believe it to be a piece of the Netherese city that fell off in the crash and lodged itself itself in Icewind Dale. If we can explore that, then we'll have a better idea of what we might be going into. Who is we? You'll be accompanying? Or you may do so on your own if you wish. Just I would trying much to like be you to helpful. accompany with us if you would like. What do you think, Quill? Do you have time to get away from your books? I have done enough reading. I'm ready for action, but I was not certain I would be welcome. Even though without me, you wouldn't really know where you would be going when she looks at Haskell. That's what maps are for. Mm. But of course you're welcome. Moon I Stew drinker, you are our companions. We have kept each other safe for quite some time now. What are your thoughts on this thing? Brother? 
If you are as close to her as I think you are, then it would be fine for her to travel with us. But I do not understand why you could not share with us the location and we could go on our own. You are more than welcome to go to the tower on your own. I believe you do know the location. I merely mean all of the other information about the Codicile of White and the Ragged Glacier Waterfall. I would not know how to read the things once we got there to make sure we found the right Codicile. I do not believe the Codicile to be inside that tower. Just directions too. Perhaps. It is a link in a long chain. Yes, and I suspect that Dazan may have had a lead. Perhaps he visited there before his death and we could salvage some of his notes. I'm not certain of this, but of course I will continue researching and can do so if you don't wish me to accompany you. I think it would be good for you to come with us. Though we have grown close, we do not know each other as well as I would hope. Very good then. As long as Stew Drinker is okay with it as well. Uh, Stew Drinker is going to turn towards Quill and hopefully like the angle makes it so that he only Quill can see his face, but he's going to give like a little, a little wink of like, yeah, date time (laughs) and say, um, yeah, um, especially if you are familiar with those mental magics, um, and he trails off for a second and says, maybe you could teach me a little bit about how to guard myself against that kind of thing. I am happy to teach you what I know about magic. Unfortunately, if you are looking for mental magic specialty, you'll have to talk to Haskell. She's I'm not wrong. more of a evocation type myself. Okay. Of course you are. There is I nothing just... wrong with blowing things or people up now and then. What's your phrasing, Quill? It can be very effective. When the conversation is drifted away from Stew Drinker, I will lean into him and say, do not learn anything from her. I haven't actually seen your power, Everest. I look forward to it. I also look forward to leaving. When will that happen? Well, I will need at least a day's time to situate things with Thube, make sure the place doesn't figuratively burn down while we're we're both gone. Of course. You understand. Leaving Thube in charge. This will be amazing. I have a question. After the fuss with the dragon, are people not asking about the leader of this village? We have handled that. Perfect. And actually, this brings me back around to my original point. As I said at the beginning, people need something to believe in, right? If we present to them that we have a plan for ending this eternal winter. Think of what that will do for them. The hope. Indeed. Uh, So, heroes, let that be your motivation. You consider yourself a hero, Avarice. Oh, no. I have no illusions about that. Good. Again, when are we leaving? Well, as I said, I need a day. So perhaps- We will ready ourselves, stock up again on supplies. And thank you, Avarice, for bringing this to our attention. Of course. Quill, if you could just spare a moment longer, I would like a word. Of course. Hey, take a number and have a word next. Hmm. Quill. Would you mind waiting outside? Of course. Stu, 
Let us go. All right. She gives you all a very icy smile as you leave. As soon as we're outside, uh, she's gonna grab onto both your arm and Moon Eye's arm, and she has like an actual, like genuine grin. You will not believe what I have found. It is, is a it? spell, and it will help shield your mind from the magics that made you hurt your brother, Stew Drinker. Really? Yes. It is called um, an intellect fortress. It does not, it does not make you immune, but it will help you. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, Moon Eye, if you wish, I will show you the spell so you know it is safe before I use it on your brother. I trust you, Quill. I have no fear of that. Wonderful. You are still in the twilight at this time. Thank you. I must wait for Avarice, but do not let me stop you. I look forward to getting on the road again. As do I. Pascal, I haven't had the pleasure of talking to you very much. What can I do for you? Let's cut the pleasantries and talk business. Very good. She doesn't look like Quill, right? Like her skin's not blue. No, do you want to see another picture of her? Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. A, it's been a hot minute since we've seen Avarice. A, or a cold minute, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> da, da, da. She is white. She's an, al she's an albino tiefling. Okay. What do you know about the black ice? The Chardolin. What do you know about what it has to do with Quill? About what it has to do with Quill? I don't know exactly what's happened here in this place with your group and your black ice badges, but I know it has something to do with what's happening to Quill. Quill has chosen a path. Quill has chosen nothing. Quill went from a sweet, shy girl to abusing young servants the next day. As soon as she started interacting with that black ice, I didn't make the connection at first. But when she's turned blue like that, she looked like she was going to die. I tried treating her. I know it has something to do with it. I tried taking it away from her. It didn't seem to fix it. Something tells me you know more than I. But I don't admit that easily. Hmm. Let me just relish this moment for a little while longer. Okay, I think I'll remember that expression on your face. He's not grinning where he's like full on glaring. <laughs> She's still cool as a cucumber. What exactly are you implying? If you're asking if I did anything, the answer is no. I'm not implying you directly, but you and this cult are filthy. I have respect for most deities and gods even the ones in shadier areas of life. But what I've learned is those who follow the dark gods and the devils, they tend to corrupt one's mind instead of teach it. They pull them along from their own free will, and I don't like that, especially in people I care for. Nobody has forced Quill to do anything. This and joke speaking is not of... funny anymore. They it's came no here joke. on a quest. This place fitting in with your bunch. I don't give a damn about any of it. I don't give a damn about Levistus. And I don't think Quill does either on her own free will. Levistus, How long before you tried to pull on my mind, Avarice? You in this group. I have tried no such thing. Not yet. Whether or not you care for Levistus does not mean he cannot use you as a tool. I suggest you get used to that. I will get used to nothing. I have enough voices in my head. I don't need another. Well, that's fine. If Quill any has harm chosen comes her to path. Quill and your path, I will kill you, Avarice. Harm? I don't think I can't. I'm sorry. Harm? Have you seen Quill lately? Her confidence? Her commanding power? Her evil. What do you speak of? I was there in the battle, Avarice. I saw the collateral damage. Not even a tear shed for those she burned. Sometimes sacrifices must be made, Haskell. 
For the greater yes, good. but not unnecessary ones. And not from her. <laughs> Who's to say those people wouldn't have just died from the dragon anyway? Quill unleashed her full power, which is a thing that was needed in that moment. And besides, I don't know this Quill you speak of before she came here, this small, scared little girl you speak of. A day but before. perhaps what you're actually mad about is that you no longer have the power to command her. I did not command Quill, nor have I ever tried. Well, I am no pure soul either, Avarice. Oh, I know. But you are about to travel with a group with three people who are, including Quill, even if her heart is tainted right now. If you try anything else with the other two or myself, we will turn on you so quickly. No hesitation. And when it comes down to it, Quill will too. Place your bets where you will, Haskell. They are but I can assure you, we are working on the same side right now. There's no need for this sort of threat. You have welcome for me only to keep an eye on you. Is that all? Are you done That's with your all. blustering? Very good. I I'll have actual business to attend to and then. A bow. Enjoy your chat with Quill. He's going to compose himself. The, get the his gargoyles back are on. both like on, on either side of the door on the inside, and they, they both like just fold their arms and glare down at you as you walk by. How, how tall are these gargoyles? Both uh, gargoyles are large creatures, I believe. So they're bigger than, than the Goliaths. I'm going to boop one right on the belly, just like a little boop. <laughs> It grumbles. It. It's like this low, earthy rumble. And Avarice just waves her hand. <laughs> Cute pets. And he'll leave. Quill. Quill will smile at Haskell as he leaves. He'll smile back very warmly. Did you get everything that you needed? I suppose. Good. <sighs> Do I look okay? You do. You look too good for her, in fact. Stop. That Stop. is what everyone... You stay wants. yourself with her. What is myself? I am blue now. It is very confusing. And she'll like, give you like a playful wink and then push into the room. Just remember, we don't owe anything to those that we pursue, other than giving them ourselves. Don't that is a lot to give. All right, whatever you say, Haskell. Don't let her take advantage. She just rolls her eyes. As if she's not taking you seriously. He's not going to smile anymore. He's going to look like very serious. I mean it, Quill. You're a special person. Everest, we will see. Everest makes me strong. You make Everest strong, I think. I think that's her vestment in you. I will think on this, but I think you are wrong, Haskell. I sure hope so. I'm you going know I don't now. like being wrong. I Best know. of luck. Oh, and untuck your cloak. It's stuck under your belt. What? No! <gasps> Eric! And she'll shoot him like the biggest dagger. Uh, I'm sorry, I was gonna say something, but then you were talking and I didn't want to interrupt. I'm Just sorry, dead, Eric. Eric. And oh, fix it. Yes, next yes. Time, Eric. What does Merrick call you? Does he say my my lady? <laughs> what does he tell? What does he call you? What's your honorific? Ugh, my goodness! What an excellent question. Probably my lady. Okay. Yeah, that sounds. Yes, about my right. lady. Right away. I, I'm I, so I was sorry. thinking like mistress, but that's such a hard word to say. Yeah. Oh, Daka is suggesting dark lady. Oh, blue, blue lady. lady. <laughs> no, blue lady. <laughs> just lady is fine. <laughs> Yes, yes, right away. You look excellent. Perfect. Stay here, Eric. <sighs> and then she'll walk into the room. Ah. Oh. You look exhausted. There was a hubbub outside of your door. There usually is with Haskell, I have found. He is not as bad as they say. 
that's funny for you to say that, as he just finished threatening me here in my own office. What? Haskell? Yes. Don't, Don't worry, worry, I'm not afraid. I just merely thought it interesting. That is interesting. He thinks that you are using me <clears throat> to get all of your work done. Oh, I'm well aware. Well aware that you are using me? <laughs> no, well aware of what he believes. The mm. story that he's telling himself and everyone else. Mm. I told him I've never forced you to do anything against your will. That is true. She's going to take a seat on the edge of the desk <clears throat> instead of the chair. Um, that way she's just like a little closer to Avarice. She'll sit next to you on, like on the desk, like side okay. by side. It was not so long ago that we had a conversation about our dynamic. It, it makes sense that he does not understand what we are. He spoke of a sad, scared, naive little girl that you were before you came here to this castle. Did he? And I, of course, have not spent nearly the time you have with him, and I don't mean to overstep my bounds, but the sense I was getting from him was that he was threatened by me, not because he feared I was controlling you, but because he feared he was losing control of you. Haskell has never had control over me. He has belittled me, yes many of times, but he has never had control. Perhaps because now you have taken it back. She just is quiet at that. Like, Merely something to consider, my dear. As I said, I am no expert. I did not see your relationship beforehand and I have not traveled with you. I just, I know, I know someone when they feel threatened. I know what that looks like. I am not threatened by Haskell. No, no. Haskell had that oh. look in his eyes. He's threatened by you. And for good reason. Look at you. Your power. I have gotten very strong. Levistus has formed another contract with me. then you are only getting stronger. She'll nod. I can feel this magic other than my, than what I was born with. It is strange and I am excited to test it out. Does it please you? I do not know. I have not cast it yet. Well, I'm eager to see what it can do. As am I. With you traveling with us, uh, what is the word I'm looking for? You are not a people person, Avarice. Will you be able to get along with these people? I think that mostly depends on Haskell, if I'm being honest. I will mind Haskell. He is not strong on manners. No, I've noticed that much. The other two are just fine. I don't imagine we'll have a lot to discuss in warm conversation, but I can handle people when I must. She kind of grins playfully I'm gonna like fluff the feathers of her like shirt thing I will play nice I promise thank you and in that case I look forward to our travels before you go I did have a little bit more information that I thought would be pertinent to just your ears it seemed a bit more sensitive, and I thought you would want to decide what to do with it. 
Tell me. As you know, I have been researching the Shardolin from the dragon to ah. understand if we could possibly use it for our own means. For Levistus's means? Yes, our, the collection of the three of us, of course. Unfortunately, I hit a dead end with that. I now think that giving people the hope of this winter's end in the name of, of Levistus would possibly be a more effective way of getting the sheep to follow. However, that is beside the point. What I did discover from this Shardolin is that it had a unique, how to put it, magical signature when I examined it. It already bore the mark, the influence of another entity, which is why I couldn't mold it to Levistus's will, if that makes sense. I see. What is this other entity? I am not sure. It's not one I recognize, but the most interesting part of this whole thing is that signature matches Haskell's own magical aura. I'm not suggesting that these bear the mark of Haskell's influence, but merely that perhaps both Haskell and this Shardolin are touched by the same thing. That is unnerving. Indeed. And he says I'm the one to watch out for. I will have to watch out for this. Yes, I felt it necessary to tell you and not the others because I did not wish to start a panic. And of course, if I shared this information with Haskell, he would only interpret it as a way for me to undermine him, you know. Haskell does have a particular way that he sees the world and it is not often the right way. I knew you would be the best person to carry this information. You will know what to do with it. And of course, I wanted to keep you safe in case, well, I don't know what this entity is or what it is capable of. And I don't know how it has influenced Haskell. Are you I, all right? Yes. It is just, you have brought up a lot for me to think about. I understand. She puts her hand on yours. It is a lot, and you've had a taxing few days, to be sure. Yes. Training Eric has taken a lot out of me. <laughs> but you've come so far with him. I am very impressed. I am excited for what he will be able to do. Not only for me, but for Levistus. Yes. Is it strange, Avarice, that one day I did not care for Levistus, and the next he was such a prevalent part of my life? I think that these types of questions are best judged by results. Where are you now? I am stronger now. I am more confident. I do not worry. And I used to worry a lot. Yes, perhaps it is strange. But strange does not mean bad. Any tiefling could tell you that. And she smiles. I like knock my horn against hers. One last thing, as while we're on the topic of Levistus, uh, this was another thing that I don't know that the others would fully appreciate, but as I mentioned, the Codicil of White is rumored to be able to open any passage in ice, you remember. Isn't Levistus trapped in ice? I knew you were smart. We could, we could free him. Yes, why do you think Levistus is so interested in my quest? Uh, I am sorry it took me so long to get to this tower. I did not realize the importance. No, no, it's snow on the wind, my dear. We are here now, and as you might understand, not everyone is happy about that information, so I wanted to gauge 
before I just go handing it out to everyone. And now I am very confident that you can be trusted completely. <sighs> of course. What, did you think I killed the old owner for no reason? <laughs> I merely wanted to make sure it was not the excited efforts of a young upstart who didn't know what they were doing. You Another will... Eric. <laughs> Don't ever compare me to Eric again. <laughs> <laughs> Never. You have proven yourself measures beyond that sap. <sighs> well, this has been a lovely conversation, which I'm happy to say. Maybe not the one with Haskell, but with you. I'm glad we ended on this one. Left There's... me in much better spirits. You have said one more thing many times. I promise that is all. Perhaps I could say it once. Yes, of course. All right. Um, and she like looks like she's thinking for a second. And there's a moment where she realizes she doesn't know how to make the transition between what they were talking about and what she wants to do. So she's just going to like lean in and kiss her. <laughs> Uh, you hear the gargoyles, uh, like, woo, <laughs> <laughs> and she, uh, she, like, like, breaks away for a second and smacks the table and looks at them and says, shut up, and then goes right back to kissing you. Perfect. She's a little clumsy. She's never kissed before, but she's very enthusiastic. Avarice kind of guides you along, uh, Perfect. and... It is a lovely little makeout sesh. Well, I guess I don't, she, Avarice is going to go for that if you're going to That's let fine. Her. Okay. Yeah, she'll go for it. <laughs> and then when she walks out, she'll be all like, there'll be a little bit more pink to her blue face. Well, uh, Quill is sucking face. Can I catch uh, Stew Drinker? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> go ahead. <laughs> is, is Stew Drinker and Moon Knight together? It's fine if they're. I'll chat with both of yeah. them. Uh, Haskell's gonna look very angry. He's gonna come stomping down, catch up with you guys. What do you two think of Avarice joining our party? I think it is what is needed in Quill's journey, but I feel that it will be a challenge that we will all have to overcome. What do you all feel about this entire situation? She said she dealt with people from wondering about the leadership of the town after the dragon. You know she's probably just capturing more prisoners. I know this started as a cover, but now it feels an awful lot like we're working for a cult. Well, I, I don't like the fact that she has prisoners, but she did say that we could end the never-ending winter. And I think... If we can do that, then it'll save everyone. If she speaks the truth, we could be furthering some sinister agenda for all we know. Deals with no. devils are even more dangerous than those with demons, because devils are smart. Avarice is smart. I don't trust her. We will definitely be furthering their agenda, otherwise they would not be involved in this. We need to be careful. About what we do for this woman. You have the heart of a hero, stew drinker. Devils and heroes don't mix. Not ever. If they do, you're not being the hero you think you are. Right. Um, Haskell. Hmm. Will you... Will you make sure that... As far as my head goes... I may have the heart of a hero, but sometimes I find myself unable to control myself. Um, can you help me and make sure that we can continue to help people so we don't ever do what I did to Moon Eye? Well, I don't know if I'm the best one to be making decisions in terms of sanity. But I don't like seeing innocents get hurt. Not seriously hurt. I'll harass Thub until he cries, but I don't even want to see that fool harmed. Not if he doesn't have it coming. I'm a bit vengeful, but capturing innocents, harassing 
poor little servants like that sweet girl. It doesn't settle well with me. I may no, have darkness me. in my heart, but it comes from a place of light. You understand that, Munai. I do. This devil and their cult is just cold. His damned hellscape. They was always told hell was full of fire, and they lied to me. I woke up in hell, and it's frozen over, and I don't like it. Let's just keep an eye on Avarice. And if dark dealings need to be done with her, I will try to be the one to do them. I am not afraid to end her life if she crosses the wrong line. If she endangers us. Uh, you have my sword on your side. Good. I just hope we have quills if it comes to it. I worry for her. You didn't know her like I did before this, but... It's not a usual transition. I'm glad she's confident and worrying less, but I don't like the way it came about. It doesn't feel right. We all have darkness inside ourselves, and she is still riding that edge between day and night. Yes, but I understand your concern. She is drifting closer to the darkness. And avoid any of this black ice. I can't be sure. But the way she turned blue, I fear it has something to do with all this black ice. And the dragon made of it. I it agree. was influencing people and inciting chaos and confusion. That's supposed to be my thing. And I end it when it gets funny. <laughs> Thank you for hearing me out. You're both good traveling companions. As are you in your own way. Of course. I'm your windbag. I do all the speaking. He's going to yes. pat you both on the back of the calf and move on. <laughs> all right. <laughs> we'll, uh, we'll actually go ahead and take our break there. That's real good timing. So uh, we will set off on our journey when we come back in about 10 minutes. So don't go away. Sounds good. Bye. Hey everyone, thanks for sticking around with us for our little break. We are back and everyone is about to set off for a great big trip to this tower that was broken off from the Netherese city, or at least that is what Avarice suspects. Uh, so you guys suit up your griffins, I would assume, now that, you, now that they are officially yours. Um, do does anybody name their griffin? I feel mm. like I don't know. That's usually my natural inclination is to name the name my pets. Um, <laughs> if if I have enough time, I would like to ritually cast speak with animals and ask my griffin what its name is. Back <laughs> <laughs> on you. <laughs> uh, if I'm if I were if I were gonna be rude. I would point out that I think griffins aren't technically animals, but I like oh. the use, so I'm going to, I'll allow it. I, let me just look actually really quick. I think they, what are they classified as? They're, oh, they're okay. classified as monstrosities. So oh, there's a no. fun fact, but I'll let you talk to your griffin because that's cool. Um, Sweet. It's, uh, let's see. It's name. His name is Let's See. Yeah, we'll go with that. Its name is Let's See. You said Let's See. I know, but oh. I like that. I, I, I'm just a second behind, sorry. <laughs> it's nice to meet you, Let's See. Uh, do you like purple, blue, or yellow? Actually, I think I picked yellow for you because your shirt. Is that okay with you? I'm just, I'm tinting the Griffin tokens so that you guys awesome. can keep track of whose is whose. <clears throat> okay. Let Mine's me... named Mist Nail. Mist Nail. Because condensation forms on the tip of their claw when they're flying around up high. That's cool. Okay. Uh, and I gave you the red one. Mist Nail? Yep. Okay. Uh, 
Stude or Moon Eye Quill. Either of you have a name? I do. Uh, so this is the name that I almost gave to Gale, but I will call my Griffin Tempest. Hmm. Mm. Cool. <clears throat> I love, well, what's Moon Eyes Griffin's name? Oh, we have not known each other long enough to acquire names. Okay, fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just put no name right now. <clears throat> okay. Um, Avarice comes out that the morning of you guys setting out uh, and she's got like a really nice white leather backpack uh, with her adventuring gear and she is dressed kind of the same as, you, as she usually is. Um, she's got her staff with her, which she doesn't always carry around. Um, <clears throat> and her hair is like braided back. I mean, she has short hair anyway, but it's like braided back and like, this is, this is Avarice Adventuring Edition. Mm. <laughs> and she uh, walks like out proudly. And you see that there are also some books like buckled in her backpack. And uh, she goes up to you, Quill, and then like uh, shows you her wrist. And there's a uh, leather band around it that has a few feathers on it. She says, look what I made. It'll make me lighter so I can fit on your griffin with you. And it won't slow Tempest down one bit. And that's then I get to ride close to you the whole time. That is very clever. I like it. Well, these books aren't just for entertainment. And she like pats them on her backpack. People read books for entertainment? Ah, oh, Quill. Sometimes I wonder how we ever get along. She says this playfully. <laughs> well, I guess you complete me. She, uh... You like, read the books, I will read the storms. <laughs> that Oscar sounds rolls nice. rolls his eyes and hops on his griffin. <laughs> <laughs> uh, stew, stew drinker, would you like to narrate your blessing now, or do you want to leave that for later? Oh, yeah, yeah, okay. So I I forgot during the break, but uh, Stu Drinker will actually go up to Haskell before we take flight. And um, he's going to say, so I, I don't really know a lot of songs, but, and then he starts, he starts humming something. Uh, and he says, but I, I was able to do this. Um, and he takes out a little candle and you see it uh, instantly light um, because of the wonderful blessing that I received from uh, Tom Brader, uh, the major blessing charm of the star. I discover a spark of magic within me. And after having had that long rest, I've permanently learned a cantrip as an innate <laughs> spell. <laughs> what the timing? Yeah. So <laughs> Haskell's jaw is just gonna kind of drop. Oh my god, I need to be a teacher. Keep keep working at that. Yeah. If you can make the flame bigger. Avarice look for once looks equally shocked. She is has he has he what always had I taught him magic, magic. <laughs> yesterday. Yeah. All beings possess magic within them. That is definitely not true. Moon Eye is correct. <laughs> I was born with a storm in my veins. Yes, well, you're all it just very a... lucky. I assure you, not everyone is born with magic. I've well, known some very mundane fools in my time. Stew Drinker was. Really? And on this point, I have to agree with you, Haskell. But our Stew Drinker here, that's quite impressive. Thank you. Uh, yes, I am quite impressed, Stew Drinker. Perhaps try working on dancing next. All right. Uh, and then you'll see him just kind of flail his arms and legs over back over to his griffin. 
<laughs> what cantrip did you learn? Druid craft. That's so cool. Druid craft. <laughs> what does <Yeah>. that do? <laughs> like makes a minor natural effect. Yeah. Effect, like like a little breeze or like leaves dancing or snow drift or whatever. Absolutely. I love that so much. That's really funny. It's like it's like a wildling's prestigitation. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Nice. I have some free times in the evenings, Quill, if you'd like me to teach you a thing or two as well. No. Oh, just no? No follow-up? Oh, I, you are right. I am so sorry. No, thank you. Perhaps she could teach you a thing or two, Haskell. No. I don't do evocation. You don't do evocation? No, too dangerous. That is true. I would not want you to have, say, a fireball. Yes, I don't think anybody would want that. No, I don't think so. Haskell's going to take off on his griffin. <laughs> All right. Here we go. Up, up, and away on the griffins. Uh, you guys... Oh, you went from Mario to Peter Pan. <laughs> <laughs> I actually... Well, I had Peter Pan in my head initially, and so then it went there. But one way or another, whether you're Mario or Peter Pan, you're flying on griffins. <clears throat> Man, we were about to steal dog sleds. Now we just got griffins. Yeah. So never say I didn't do anything for you. <laughs> <laughs> Might not be giving you a ton of gold, but I gave you griffins, dang it. It's okay. Moon Eye will probably give them away at some point. <laughs> well, I he can. hasn't named his, so <laughs> we're not on a good track record so far. We can't give them away. They're not ours, but they can leave at <laughs> any time that they wish. <laughs> <laughs> All right, <clears throat> so uh, they're flying. It's cold up here because, you know, wind and stuff, uh, and it's always cold in Icewind Dale. Who has the highest passive perception? I think that's Moon Eye. Refreshing. It is me, I think. Okay. So, I have a 16. All right, in the bracing air as you're flying on your no-name griffin, you spot down below... Uh, some movement on the ground <clears throat> and it looks like several uh beings they uh they look like humanoid um they are in a tight circle and it's and as you are flying a bit closer it seems like they are beating on something or someone in the center i will tap my new friend on their their neck and lean towards their ear and say, would you fly down? Okay. Uh, are you leading the way, Moon? I guess I should have asked who's like flying ahead. No. Okay, well. Haskell would be like just not leading. He's just off to the sides doing tricks. <laughs> I'm just I mean, I assume Avarice is leading the way, right? She's the one who knows where we're going. You guys know where this tower is. You guys have seen it. Remember from the oh, this uh, is the cave? one we saw. Yeah, the tower. Mm -hmm. So you guys could just kind of be flying in a in a cluster. That's fine. So Moon Eye starts to swoop downward. What do the rest of you do? I'll follow Moon Eye if he's going somewhere. Damn. Reluctantly, we'll follow. Okay. We have a place to be. <laughs> Oh, another distraction. Let's hope this one is quick. Does Gail ride on the back? I mean, I'm assuming Gail is with you. Uh, uh, but how do you? How is you? How is your Griffin arranged? So oh. it has uh, my my gal pals behind me, and then in my lap I have Gail, but he's strapped to me like very okay. baby Bjorn E, Got and like his arms and his <laughs> legs are immobile, but his head is out. I'm looking around. Oh, that's so cute. Yeah. I couldn't help but imagine like a stork-like bag that the griffins carry. <laughs> <laughs> He's just swinging wildly in the breeze. It's Poor Gale. down below. Oh. <laughs> like, my goodness. I just realized Gale is my Grogu. Oh. <laughs> uh, 
Tom Brader wants to know where manservant Eric is, and we should clarify that you left Eric to be someone competent to watch the castle. Cried. We both cried at our parting. It was really tearful and painful to separate from my main man. He assured you that he would do the best job while you were away. She'll tell him not to die, but for some reason she's very sure he's going to die. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you guys swoop down, <clears throat> and uh, you can you can see a bit closer mm. now. Why don't you all make perception checks to see what details y'all pick up? Wow, we're finally rolling dice for the first time in forever. Oh, dice. We're kind of I would like to spend a hero point and re-roll just because I can. Okay. Mm okay, so I have a 14. I have a 15 max. Oh, but Haskell got a 19, so I don't matter. <laughs> you matter. Accurate. Well. <laughs> uh, let's see. Are you guys affirmated? You are. Okay. So, with uh, Moon Eye and Haskell, you guys see these figures down below. Uh, and it, it looks like there are eight surrounding one. Um, <clears throat> the, the eight in the circle are dressed in various. Um, tiger skins and then the one in the middle you see is uh, a strange mix of a goliath and a polar bear what like a uh, the hybrid form of a were bear that you have seen before not the one in is the one in the middle the talk? one in the middle is getting beat on by all of these tiger skinned not so okay are... their skin is not literally tiger but they are dressed in tiger skins is this oya Mirata? are they are they goliaths also no they appear to be human this is the tiger tribe but, but you have not noticed this up. yet quill oh well, i don't know it is a polar werebear but you have met okay. polar werebears before that's true. not a ton but you met a couple okay i'll can i can i do a dramatic thing uh Sure, you haven't, roll you, initiative first? you haven't picked up on this level of detail oh, yet. Okay. Only Haskell and Moon Eye. Uh, you still, you're probably a little bit farther behind and you, you just see shadows. I got oh, a you, got a, you got a 15? Sorry, I thought you got a 14. Yes, you noticed this as well. My bad. <laughs> um, Your drinker's is my, the only one who doesn't. Is my griffin male or female? Can we tell? I don't know about griffin. You can, you can decide. What do you want it to be? Do you want me to decide? Uh, Do you want the dice to no. decide? Should we roll this? Sure, yeah, let's roll it. Let's, okay. Uh, Why don't you roll just a d4? Yep. <laughs> and one to two, it'll be female. Okay. <laughs> Making the big decisions here, yeah. you guys. I, well, maybe not. My engine is not cooperating, and perhaps by the end of the stream, it will roll the you dice. You want me to roll for you? <laughs> oh, I got it. I got it. Ah, there it is. I use I rolled oh, a one. Please. Oh wait, All did right. it go for you? Okay. No, nah, that was yours. One. So female, female. right? Is that what you said? Yep. So um, I will say, excuse me, my female friend. Um, you fly very well. How do you feel about fighting? Uh, one squawk that yes, or two squawks that you would like me to leave you from this battle. The beginning of that definitely sounded like you were hitting on a griffin. <laughs> Just want to throw that out there. Hello, my female friend. Who said you I was? You are very good at flying. <laughs> <laughs> so good at flying. <laughs> Tell me what I can do for you. Oh my gosh. All right. Moving on. X card, X card. <laughs> uh, also, your D4 finally showed up and it was also a one. So it's meant to be. Destiny. <clears throat> the griffin uh seems amenable to your command it doesn't seem afraid oh, um, not a command a request i am asking it seems amenable to your requests moon eye <laughs> excellent in that we case don't want i want to will fight say... and if we want to just save this person 
He'll ask, will like flutter up next to you. I have a new trick. I can just get them out of there. Why don't we roll initiative? Yeah. Let's. Because time is passing as you guys are discussing. Up and we're discussing, up and, up and they're earth. just dead. Quill is just racing straight to them too. Yeah, we'll we'll see we'll see the order of of things. Come on, Quill. It's really important that you roll high. Oh, I messed up trade. I forgot to click my token first. Me too. Let me just. You guys. Uh, I don't even see the token. I just I added the turn the order. Either. Oh, I'm a I'm a big dumb. I need to drag you guys to the map. Duh. Okay, hang on. Uh, I, all right, I've just thrown you onto the map here. It, this is not necessarily where you are, but we can get started. And I guess I can start our battle music. Bum 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 bum. Where the hell is my initiative? Okay, here we go. I found it. Don't worry, guys. Where are the tokens? Can you not see yourselves? Damn it. I can, I can see, see myself. myself. I, I need to be added to initiative. I, I think I have up. to possibly refresh. Okay, I'm go ahead and refresh. Operating. Be right back. <laughs> Snap. <clears throat> Dun, dun, dun. Roll for that person and for this person. I'm so sad I didn't win initiative. Can you add me in too, Tori? Oh, yeah. I'm sorry I did it wrong. Anybody else need to be added in? Are we affirmated? Nice. We are affirmated. <sighs> Dang it. <laughs> I just realized a thing. It's fine. Uh, let's see. We are missing Moon Eye. Oh, are you still refreshing? Yes. All right. All right. That's OK. <clears throat> All right. Uh, oh, and you guys should have control over your griffins as well. Perfection. I suppose you're all um, mounted up right now. I do not have control over my griffin. Uh, I think you gave it to Vinny. Oh yeah, you are correct. <clears throat> Let me give it back to you. I can't. I can't be on top of my thing. It it makes anger. <laughs> there. <clears throat> All right. How's it coming, Moon Eye? How's it looking? It's slowly but surely coming. Just um, it's about to be up, I think. But okay, just start. Assume I go later than. That's okay. Yeah, we can do Haskell first. Are we uh, fighting or are we not fighting, everyone? I thought you had a plan. I can save him without fighting. But there's no point in it if we're just going to attack these people. That is the Tiger Clan. So we're fighting them? I am from the Tiger Clan. Uh, so we're not fighting them? I would like to make a show of force. Wait a minute. Tiger Clan is the one who tried to kill Quill, right? Yes. She's got okay. a big vendetta. They sacrificed her. Tried no. to sacrifice her. Moving ice. They did successfully get her out there. It's they did. just not they did. their fault that she didn't die. True. Okay. Well, if Quill's on vengeance, Haskell likes a little bit of vengeance. Um. So I can, the the Griffin can move for me, right? Uh, yes. You it's the kinda... Griffin can move, disengage, or what? Dash, dis disengage, or. Oh my gosh, there was one more. But yes, it can move. <laughs> okay. Um, so in that case. Do, do, oh, or defend. On this? That's that those are the actions it can take. Or defend. Got it. Okay. Oh, it's a 30 foot radius, you say. Oh, and let me put in the stat sheet for you guys for the Griffins. Um in case you want to know their move speed and whatnot. 
Is it like, uh, does it take an action or like my move? Out? It's half of my movement to dismount from it, right? Um, yes. Okay. So <laughs> if I can, if this is like within the room of my movement, I would like my griffin to just fly me over there, <clears throat> like low. And then Haskell just wants to hop off. He wants his griffin to keep going. He doesn't want his griffin getting involved. Okay. You're doing a flyby? Doing a flyby. I just want to drop down right next to him. And uh, he's going to kind of do like the hero drop and like slowly stand up as his eyes flare purple. I suggest that you leave this one alone if you care about your lives. And uh, this is going to get the friendly one too, but he doesn't care. I'm going to do fear. They all need to make wisdom saving throws or be afraid. Okay. It's a 30 foot radius from me. Nice. Wait a minute. Is it just enemies or can I specify? I believe fear is not specified. Yeah, I'm going to put it in chat for you. Each, Each creature. creature. Oh, and a 30 foot cone. Uh huh. Okay. So in that case, I'm going to get dropped off right here and I'll get all of them in the cone there. Perfect. Okay. Please tell me the white feather that you're using is one that you stole from Avarice is close. <laughs> <laughs> yes, totally. Uh, and actually, I need you right there for the cone to get them all. So I'll drop off right here, and I'm in the 30-foot cone. Cool. Right there. And my DC is 14? Your DC is, yeah, 14. Okay. First one fails. Yep, okay, that's a fail. Wait, why does it say range self 30 foot radius and then target each creature in a 30 foot cone? Don't look at those. Okay, yeah, that's those, why I got confused. The description I... is probably. Okay, gotcha. Target each creature in a 30 foot cone. I don't know why the, the range is weird. Okay, that's what confused me. I was like, I thought I saw radius on here somewhere. Well, look. Um, okay, so one fails, one succeeds. I'm gonna. I need to mark these people who have failed. I will give them a purple dot for purple fear. Yeah, obviously. Mm -hmm. All right, and then all these guys fail, fail, fail. Nat twenty success. Yeah, Haskell just pisses mm. some people off. They're not scared. Uh, success. <laughs> They're like, get a lot of this guy. Fail. Okay, so. Useless by do a trick. <laughs> these guys all have purple fear in them. The fear of the purple. Ooh. Wow, it kind of worked out. The, like, front people are the ones who failed. <laughs> Mass wow. wave of chaos. Oh, and I will me. save for... Our Goliath werebear friend. Oh, yeah, uh, they also duck. fail. Dang it. Come on, buddy. Be braver than that. It's just Haskell. They just had their <laughs> ass kicked. <laughs> okay. There's all my saving throws. There's uh, halflings falling from the sky. <laughs> are you uh, doing a bonus action? Uh, yeah. You know what? Uh, Quill looks so determined. He's going to uh, kind of bang his drum and look up at her. This is your time for vengeance, Quill. Just don't let it go to your heart too much. And uh, I'm going to give you a bardic performance. Perfection. The D8 these days. That's my turn. Okay. Um, sorry, I'm just reading the fear of the creature where it doesn't have a line of sight. The creature can make a wisdom saving throw. Got it. Okay. Moon Eye, you're up. Yes. Um... <clears throat> So they're flying. So they have 80 feet of movement. Uh, as we move forward, I'm going to say, um, do you lady think you can lift that large being in the middle? Um, it can try. Good. <laughs> Probably, maybe not with you riding on it. Okay. Uh, in that case, as it swoops down low, I'll take an action to drop off of it. 
Why don't you make an animal handling check to see uh, oh, these these griffins are not griffins are not intelligent creatures like dragons or something. So why don't you see how well you are able to communicate your preferences? A twenty, dirty A twenty. Twenty. All right. So you leap off as it goes swooping by. Yep. Well, they'll drop off here, and then have it come across and try and pick that guy up. Okay. Why don't you roll an athletics check for it? Or, or I can, if that's easier. I mean, I can roll a d20. Okay. And I've got the stats in front of me. Yeah, it's probably not doing anything. It gets a little caught up in all of the tussle and stuff. Um, and I'll say it, it like swoops by it, it tries to grab on to the werebear, but doesn't isn't able to hold its grip. Okay. And uh, is that jumping off a bonus action? Can I still take another action? Uh, that's half of your movement. I'm going to say your animal handling was your action to, oh, okay. to get yep. it to do a thing. Uh, but you have a bonus action if you would like. Uh... No, I'm good. Okay. Stew Drinker. Right. Uh, Stew Drinker is going to sprint forward uh, while drawing his sword. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. Um, and uh, he would like to um, enter a rage and cry out to them. Um, Let them go. And that'll be it for Stew Drinker. Okay. Uh, I'm going to... I accidentally skipped the werebear. I'll just move it below Moon Eye. Oh. Uh, so now I will... Oh, sorry. M Stew Drinker, you said that with such finality. Are you going to <laughs> attack? <laughs> sorry, I thought your turn was done. Just oh, my turn is done. I'm not oh, okay, going to attack okay. yet. Okay, let them go. Okay, mm -hmm. uh, so it is now the werebear's turn. They are feared, so they, let's see, they drop what they are holding, which is not anything right now, I don't think. Uh, it's bare hands. Oh, they have a great axe. So they'll drop their great axe and start running, which it can't, um, unless there's nowhere to move. So it tries to scramble away from you. Well, not it. They try to scramble away from you. And they are hemmed in by enemies, so they can't go anywhere. <clears throat> and that is their turn. And Stu Drinker went, OK. This uh, warrior here is going to drop. Great warrior, apparently. Yeah, great warrior. Ooh. They've got. Hang on, I have some villain points. I'm sitting on some villain points. I should remember that. Uh -oh. Got 13. <laughs> I do. I get so many oh, every stream. It's you. crazy. Crazy. So actually, I'm going to go ahead and drop six of them uh, to let all of these all of these hooligans here go into a tiger blood rage. Uh, and you, on their successive turns, they can do this, but you hear them, like, roar this, like, tigery, almost animalistic snarl. Um, and they will do that. Okay. So, this one, however, it, as it enters its rage, is also going to try to run away, because it's feared. He has to dash. Well, frightened, a creature must taste, take the dash action. So, there is an attack of opportunity for you, Stew Drinker. 20. It's gonna get behind this. He's gonna get behind this tree to hide from Haskell. I'm not scary. gonna take the attack of opportunity. Okay. What a hero. <laughs> uh, oh, and he dropped his. What did he have? He had a spear and a shield. So he dropped his spear and shield. Uh, it's Avarice's turn. Um, she's going to calmly get off Tempest as 
you we're still in the air oh still in the air still in the air okay so then i guess she, she will can hold... guide tempest if she wants she... quill does not mind uh i guess she'll ask she'll defer to you just hold her turn then okay Kay. she will do that um i'll just put her below you quill okay so quill's still up in the air a ways right and she is going to silently pass the reins over to Avarice. And she's just going to roll off the side of her uh, griffin so that she's falling. She's going to wait till she's like 10 feet away. And then she's going to cast her uh, thunder step. So it'll be like a huge thunderous roar midair. And she will appear next to all of them. Do you still have Gale in the little baby? Yep, but I can bring him with me. Okay. Yeah. I can bring a uh, Jason creature with me and all their stuff. Undressly oh. teleports with the baby Bjorn yeah. with the Yeti. <laughs> I just <laughs> want to make sure we keep track of where Gale is. Okay. Yeah. Gale's here. All right. Uh, that is... Uh, so she'll Dave drop off. Or it just does damage. Uh, it would do damage, but they're not close enough. But um, when I cast a spell that has lightning or thunder damage, I can do a radius of thunder damage equal to half my level to people. Okay. So Sorry. they'll just take a little bit baby damage as I land mm -hmm. next to them. And I, she just pulls herself up to her full height. What's the radius? Just. It's just me, the people adjacent to you or? Uh, let me pull it up one more time. Okay. It is. Do, do, do. Um, 10 feet. The eruption causes creatures of your choice that you see within 10 feet to take lightning or thunder damage. She uses creatures ability each choice. Yep, equal to okay. half your level. So I'm not gonna hurt this 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 person or this person. Or my or Gale. Or Gale. So yeah. the three uh three, four in front of you? Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, so she'll drop, stand up slowly, and she just has, like, lightning crackling in her eyes as she looks at them, and she'll say, Do you know who I am? They're already afraid of Haskell, but the, the, the fear in their eyes now shoots your way. The lightning, and that's lightning, the thunder can be heard within 300 feet. So it's like super loud. How much damage did you do again? Just half my level. Okay, so three? Yep. Man, nice. we had like a real Avengers level entrance here. We really did. Mm. It's, Very cool. it's satisfying the Very cinematic neat. need in me right now. Absolutely. And she's, at, she's, she's staring them down after she asks this. Okay. Sorry, I am just adjusting their hit points. Uh, did you tell Avarice anything, or are you just going to let her do nope, her thing? I did not tell her anything. Okay. I just passed over the reins and pieced right out. She's cool with that. Um, she will land Tempest calmly and then dismount uh like a lady dismounting a horse very properly. She just sort of slides off onto the ground. Um, and I'm trying to decide if she like does want to do anything or if she wants to just let you guys do stuff. I guess she'll shoot a fire bolt, might as well. So yeah, she'll um, step up. What's the range here? Okay, she'll just step up till she's within range and shoot the one just above you, Quill, with a firebolt. Asko would like to take note of her, like, composure in this fight. Like, is she, like, gleefully attacking people? Does she look bored? Some questions. Uh, okay, let me... She does hit this one with a firebolt um, for some fire damage. Imagine that. And the dice are rolling for 12 damage. All right. Uh, she looks 
composed. She looks a little amused, I'd say. In, okay. in, in mildly interested. Okay. Uh, like as if you were watching, like, like uh, you were walking down the street and then like a street performer starts singing or playing music and you're kind of like, huh, that, that okay. level of interest. Okay, that's a good analogy. <laughs> I can get on that. Okay. <clears throat> uh, time for these people to run. <laughs> Five, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. They're just gonna go there. Five, 10. And all these people were like building spears and shields? Uh, no, only the great warrior token that all the rest of them have spears only. Okay. They're all running behind trees and such. Oh, Quill, you could take an opportunity attack. I would with super, a weapon. <laughs> super love to. Okay. Okay. Um, it will be. I cave most of my weapons, unfortunately, to <laughs> what's her name, but I still have a dagger. But I doubt that of twelve hits. Uh, well, it, it does four damage who did you attack so whoever was like right in front of her as soon as they went she just like slashes their chest wide open okay not a fatal blow but she'll hurt them okay she has pure disgust in her eyes as they all start running it seems like this um blood rage that they're in uh is sort of keeping them keeping them going through the pain okay, okay. Uh, that's mm -hmm. every oh no these people that are not scared get to go oh and I forgot this guy I'm just I've got too many tokens you guys this is what happens <laughs> uh, they are just going to continue to wail on well what? no the, the werebear is a little beat down so they're going to actually turn and address this new threat namely this this uh, blue tiefling. Come at me. They're like, why were all you guys scared of the halfling? Yeah, <laughs> they're like, I don't know what was going on there. <laughs> we're gonna do this. We're gonna get up to Quill. Okay, so you've got a few attacks coming your way, my dear. Uh, first one is a 22 to hit you. That's a hit, and I would like to use a reaction. Okay. Here, I'll put it in chat. Hellish Rebuke, that's a good one. Oh, yeah. Snap. So they there strike me, and like I turn my face, and I look back at them, and they just point a finger, and I'll say, on your knees. And they make a dexterity saving throw as hellfire erupts around them. You know, as it does. As it does. Okay. Let me roll. Here's the damage you're taking. A whopping four. Okay. And they need to make dex save, which they will do so. 18. That is just barely a success. Okay. Okay, so they take half. <clears throat> okay. How much are you rolling it? Two. Okay. Oh, so bad. Okay. And I'll glare at the ones around. The next one gets similar. Okay. They are not cowed. Okay, that's fine. Uh, the second one does miss, though. And then finally, the great warrior is going to attack. Uh, they do this. Okay. First one. Um, actually, oh. mm -hmm. since I cast a spell, I can fly. Uh-huh. Okay. Without provoking attacks of opportunity. Okay. So Gail nice. and I They are would going... be acting the Great Warrior would be acting like it could he could move after you. That's but, fine. But you can't still cinematically move away. Yeah. she would go to Stew Drinker. Cool. He will follow. <laughs> and 
Uh, 18 to hit. That is a hit. And then I'll just roll them all. A 20, and then finally... Oh, I should have done this first. That was dumb of me. A 26. Okay, so he hits you three times. Um, I'll just roll all the damage together. And you need to make a strength saving throw. Uh-oh. As the last, so he hits you twice with his spear and then bashes you with his shield to knock okay. you to try to knock you down. <clears throat> that would not be cool. Come on, Quill. Does an 11 save? An 11 does not save, so you are okay, not Okay, I'm going to use my hero point okay. because it's very important for her to not do this okay. just because of pride. Ooh, good point. 12 is my highest. 12 does not save. Damn, uh, you, have, you have bardic you here, performance. I do have bardic performance. <laughs> All of the is that a yes. D6? <laughs> it's a D8. Uh, it's a, it, yeah, and it's a save. Yeah! yeah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> nice. So you you stumble on your feet and then, I don't know, I guess Haskell uh, so words I of encouragement. So I stumble back and then I hear the beat of the drums and it's the same tempo as my heart. And as she stumbles back, she like, the last step steadies herself and she draws herself up as if she is royalty because she is and looks the sky straight in the eyes. There's like a flash of confusion, like uh, kind of deja vu in this guy's eyes as you like stare him down and pull yourself up to your full height. Um, <clears throat> you are however taking 19 damage from the spear and then, and then 12 damage from the, oh, sorry, 16 from the shield. Uh, 12 damage from the shield. Sorry, I just forgot to add an additional four on the spear. So add 16 more to the 19. So I'm taking 19 and then 16? Yes. Okay. I just said that in the most confusing way I possibly I was could. a little confused. <laughs> Okay, there, there they all are. Uh, I guess they broke line of sight, Haskell, some of them did, so they can make saves again, correct? Yeah, uh-huh. Okay, uh, and, and then- They don't have their stuff, because they dropped it. They do, that's true. Uh, all right, these two guys behind the tree, that's a fail, that's a fail. And then these other two guys, Fail, and and Haskell's so scary. fail. Gosh, they rolled so badly. <laughs> <laughs> He's real scary. All right, Haskell, you're up. All right, Haskell's mostly just kind of like beating on the on, on his drum with the blood end of his sickle, the handle. He's watching Avarice and Quill. Uh, he's gonna just kind of calmly step up behind Quill, and uh, he's gonna hit his drum a couple more times. He's gonna touch her on the back. I hope you find what you're looking for with this fight. Um, I'm going to cast a third level heal on you, and I'm going to give you another bardic inspiration. Oh, thank you. So I'll roll the heal, and then that's my turn. You go let Moon Eye go. I start rolling that if you want. Okay. Go ahead, Moon Eye. Uh, hmm. I am going to put a sleep spell right here. So it should be with the three of them. The wear bear, which I don't really want to do, but it's going to. And this guy over here. Okay. So. Sleep. And I'm going to do it at, um third level which means that I'm going to roll two uh, five you have a 20 quill seven ninety eight wow ninety eight all right let's roll it up <clears throat> 
the goddess wishes you to come to her lands briefly. Total of 51. And where are you centering it again? It's centered here. Okay, so it'll hit the So it'll the get guys these three the and that one, and it gets this one, but no one else. Got it. Okay, 51. So now I have to math. All right. Now comes the real challenge. <laughs> Wait, is that 51 damage? 51 hit points of worth oh. of creatures. Okay. So let me just start adding these together. All right. This guy Where's a good Where's a good sleep symbol? We'll put him on there. This guy is asleep. This guy's asleep. Uh I think that might be it. Yes. Okay. Get those three guys. Uh oh, it doesn't hit Quill. Right? It does oh, not hit Quill. And it wouldn't matter. Uh does it hit Gale? No, it doesn't go that far. Nope. It hits it would hit um the where bear uh yeah where bear has is not gonna go to sleep a little more than that yeah. still okay cool uh, are you moving uh yes i will move here oh sorry wrong thing um and say to quill we have stopped them from hurting him there is no reason to continue this fight there was no need for them to sacrifice a child either. And it would be wise to keep them from doing again in the future. You are angry with your mother. You are not angry with these people. They still have cruelness in their hearts. They were hurting this one for no reason. Do you not also have cruelness in your heart if you are ending them for no reason? I am ending them for a great reason, Haskell. You are and ending them to get revenge for what your mother did. I am ending them to keep them from hurting others in the future. There is a difference, Moon Eye. The werebear's running, because... <laughs> They're afraid of Haskell. <laughs> <laughs> they're chatting. The werebear just starts booking it. Actually, they're not going to go that way because they don't want to go toward the bad guys either. So, <laughs> it's going to head that way. Uh, Stew Drinker, you're up. Okay. So, first, what I would like to do, um, I'm going to take a step up here. Uh, I'll provoke an attack of opportunity from the great warrior okay but taking that strike um he's gonna do like this little he's kind of kind of position behind quill um if quill is willing um i'm gonna use a little maneuver uh that yield bait and switch which allows me to swap positions with quill um, I'll spend my superiority die to do that. Um, and that movement does not provoke opportunity attacks. So the both of us, I kind of picture like Stew Drinker moves behind Quill as Quill like flips up over the back of him. Yeah. And, <laughs> and Stew Drinker takes his position where Quill was um, right in front of that great warrior to uh, take a couple swings. Okay. Uh, What's your AC, by the way? Uh, my AC is 15 before I do the bait and switch. Okay, the uh, 16 is going to hit you, then he's going to get you with yes. the spear. For 12 damage. All right. So, uh, determination in, in his eyes in this position. Um, just to make sure that uh, that Quill will be good to go. Um, when I do the bait and switch, I roll my superiority die, and um, until my next turn, Quill will get a bonus 
to her AC of three. Cool. Thank you. And nice. that, um, sweet. Now I'm going to start swinging at this guy. What a fun move. Yeah. And I just get next level tactics. Not Moon Eye, Stew Drinker. <laughs> Moon Eye, so, too. Look at this synergy. First swing, reckless as per the huge. 26 to hit. Yes. And that'll be ooh, seven points of damage. Oh, wait, no, uh, nine. Sorry, I forgot the rage. And then second swing. Going to be a 22 to hit. Mm -hmm. And it'll be 11 points of damage. OK. You uh, detect a similar, like, grit in this warrior as you as you yourself employ during battle um and he seems to just shake off the pain great great um <laughs> stew drinker say, has met his match <laughs> <laughs> i'd say stew drinker probably smiles a little bit at this seeing uh a worthy adversary who's who has had like similar experiences similar trainings but that'll be it <laughs> yeah, he he bears his teeth at you and you see that his canines have been like uh sharpened into like more like animalistic fangs. Uh and and like I said all of these guys are wearing like tiger skins and stuff. Um and this one has a necklace of claws and teeth around his neck. Does it mean of anything of status what I that I would recognize being from this tribe? Um, probably like a great hunter, great warrior, uh, no particular, like specific rank per se, but just, they are obviously tokens of like, a, of a, a great warrior. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay. So it's gonna step around you, stew drinker. My goodness. Toward That's Quill. Okay. Does he get opt attacked? Uh, no, he didn't no. leave us space. Okay, Correct. Cool. Um, okay. And it's gonna go for Quill again. And he, he like snarls and says, I couldn't believe it when I first saw it, but I know faces. He knows me even though I'm blue? I was so prepared for everyone to be like, who is this? <laughs> If the spawn of Queen Bjornhild lives, then I am meant to put an end to it. I really tried to stand up for you, and now you're just going to go get yourself killed. <laughs> uh, all right. He hits. Uh, no, he doesn't hit because you are, you've got your cool uh, stew drinker bonus right yes. now. Um, however, he's going to try with his shield bash. A 17? A 17 definitely hits. Okay. 17 is going to be a hero point from Haskell to make him reroll with a minus two. Nice. There's okay. a reason that the Ooh. rest of your people are sleeping and cowering. Why don't you do the same? Uh, do I? I'm like, I don't know why I'm blanking on this, but do I take the lower of the two, Chase? Lower of the two, minus okay. two. Yeah. So 15, because I rolled higher on the next one. 15, and I have a plus three from Stew Drinker is an exact hit. Oh no. Bummer. Darn, it was worth a try. Uh, make a strength saving throw. Okay. 12. That is a fail. You have another bardic inspiration. <laughs> I will use my bardic inspiration. Just remember, Haskell's keeping you off your ass. Plus seven. <laughs> so, 19? Yeah. You are not knocked down. <laughs> Good lord. Okay. Thir 13 damage. And Next. then it's going to go one more time with the spear. And he will hit. Uh, Quill again? Yes. I want to hear a point this one now. Okay. <laughs> Why don't you pick on someone else, you fool? 
it's higher. So the lowest was 18. Okay, that's a hit. Uh, and now that this guy's roll up in your face, Quill, you do realize that you recognize him um, as one of the one of the guards who helped like like load you onto the ice flow, basically. So he would be someone who's um, maybe not like directly in your mother's retinue, but like certainly is loyal to her. Sure. He called me Spawn, so I was confused. I was like, does he not like <laughs> Queen Bjornhild, Sylvik's daughter? Like, what? what's his ish? Okay, but he does, he does, he is loyal to her. At least when you saw him last, <laughs> which was, you know, years ago, but he he did definitely help in your sacri- your attempted sacrifice. Okay. That is 14 damage. I took um, it. I will spend a oh. hero point and call down the light of of the moon to shield you and stop 14 damage. Oh, snap. 14, all of it? Yep. Okay. Whoops. I Look at your thing. allies. They've got your back. I know. It's so cool. So for Avarice, <laughs> she's just back there throwing firebolts or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, and then sorry, this other guy needs to make a wisdom saving throw because he can't see you as a goal anymore. But he is still feared. Quill, <laughs> you're up. <laughs> okay. <sighs> so if I cast something that ha- is a ranged spell attack, I will provoke an op attack. No, you'll have disadvantage. Of disadvantage. Mm-hmm. Okay, right, right, right. Um. So something with a save would be best. So she looks at this guy, just pure hate in her eyes. And she's remembering that Moon Eye just told her to have mercy on them, but he is battering her into the ground. He's calling her spawn. I should have used a reaction, Tori. Damn it. I forgot I had that. It's new. It's okay. Um, practice. Practice. I am going to attempt a command just for Moon Eye. And she will, she's just, she's been hit. She's been battered, but she will spit blood and she'll look up at him and say, on your knees. And I'm going to use my once a day command from Levistus. Mm-hmm. Is that, that's wisdom saving throw, correct? It is a wisdom saving throw. Okay. And maybe instead of on your knees, I'll say submit to me. If that's better. Uh, You want to know something cool? What? He rolled a critical failure. Yes. Sweet. Okay. So you want, uh, I guess, mechanically, what is it that you want him to do on his turn? I want him to drop to his hands and knees and, like, submit to me. Okay. Mm, okay, okay, okay. You might issue a command. Got it. Okay. Uh, Avarice is up. Um, and she... <laughs> Let's see. She's going to step up. Uh, here, and she's going to follow up your command, um, and say, "Who is it that you think you're speaking to? Show some respect." Um, and is going to. Oh, man, I had a spell in mind, but I want to see your command go through. So I'm going to use something different. Um, mm, She will... Actually, no, she's going to... She's shouting at the others. um, And she's going to cast Banishment. Oh. (laughs) Snap. Uh, Yeah. She'll cast Banishment. And they have to save. 
escalated dramatically. Not their strong suit. Oh my gosh, I have to keep track of so many things right now. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's a fail. And then, nope, I rolled the wrong thing. There we go. I believe in you, Tori. <laughs> I know, it's too much. Let me cast this spell. Yeah, she's going to do that. So she banishes um, this one. I, I'm going to leave it on the map because it appears in the same space that it was, but I'll put an X on it for now. Mm -hmm. um, the ones hiding behind the trees is who I think she's going to target. Sees him cowering behind a tree, banishes him. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I might have to move her up a little bit more. That's okay. I'm not. I'm not going to cheat. I'll move her up a little bit more so she can be in range. She doesn't like how how these people were treating Quill. Okay, that's her turn. They both whew, dissipate. Well, not dissipate. They both disappear and are no longer on this plane for the moment. These guys are sleeping. The rest of them are afraid. So let me save for them. <laughs> Uh, all right. Guy number one is actually a success. One save. <clears throat> and it's a 15, half school? 14? 14. 14. Is, 14. Uh, okay, so they both save. Wait, wait, wait. So the one where he looks like he gets a little bit of courage, uh, Haskell's going to just point at him and flare his eyes purple, and I want to hear a point make him reroll. Okay, I was gonna. I was about about to say you can't see either of them, but I think the hero point is. Oh, if is, I uh, can't, that's okay. That's because okay. they had to break line of sight from you, so they're oh, cowering behind trees right now. <laughs> well, I'm just gonna point at him for <laughs> fun when he starts trying to be a hero. That's cool. Okay, uh, so they <laughs> save. Is that the end of their turn? They save at the end of their turn. I think. Uh, yeah, that's what it looks like. There are so many spells in this chat right now. Fear. Um, if the creature ends its turn in a location, yeah, okay. Ends its turn. Yep, okay, so they both break the fear, but are chilling. <laughs> Haskell. You're up. Uh, <laughs> he's gonna... Did I skip this guy? I did, didn't I? No, he's the one to beat the crap out of Quill. Oh, you're right. Yep, my bad. <laughs> Haskell's gonna look at Quill. He's gonna kind of just uh, be toying with his scythe. Are we letting him live, or are we killing him? She's staring at Moon Eye right now, like so angry that he was telling her to let this guy live and that this, this, she's she's living out of hate when this guy has been charging after her across the battlefield. Um, yeah, she's not paying attention to Haskell at all. He's Haskell will look up at Moon Eye, shrug with his scythe in hand. This is her Still, they story. hunt me, Moon Eye. All right, I'm gonna ready and wait. We can ready actions in five E, right? Yeah. Or no. Okay. You just have to define a trigger. I'm gonna ready an action <clears throat> to attack this guy, if either Quill attacks him or if he attacks Quill. Killing him, Quill, will not end them hunting you, nor will it send a message to your mother. Killing him will keep him. From killing me, Moon Eye. What, you think I am supposed to live on the run for the rest of my life? Don't listen to him, Quill. You know what you're about. Do it. If you are not with me, Moon Eye, you are against me. What sort of life do you want me to live? I want you to live a life where you feel like you have control of it. Where no, you know you have made choices that are your own not those pushed upon you by others, whether it's your mother, it's your Lord, or it's your lover. I want to live my life free of their curse. This will free you of nothing. This will. You do not know what it is like to live hunted this way. Just the sight of my face makes him want to kill me. I'm going to say, Haskell, you need to act or lose your turn or pick a trigger. Did you already? 
I already did. I said if okay. he attacks Quill Sorry. or Quill then attacks Moon him. Eye, you uh, want to do anything this turn besides talking? No, just talking. Okay. Uh, the werebear can save again. <laughs> <laughs> this poor guy. We just swoop in to save him and he just runs away. Hey! That's a save. This they, is your chance, Quill, to, to take control of your path. They have controlled your path up to this point in your life because of what your mother made them do. And if you kill them now, then she will control your path. What did you mean when you swore to me in the tavern that you would help me get my vengeance? This, your vengeance is not with this one. Your vengeance is with your mother. He saw when he said, he said when he saw my face, he knew he was going to kill me. How is this different? Are you going to kill her still? Askel's gonna ask the guy on the ground. Uh, he's not on the ground. He's kneeling, isn't he? Not yet, because it's not his turn. Oh, okay. Oh, but think, but combat is strength. still very much in, in, in motion. So, Stew Drinker, are you doing anything? Um, I'd like to try to grapple this guy. Um, I guess, like, not really being... Would, would I be aware that the, the command has taken hold of him? He Yeah, so I guess, like, he is in the process of kneeling uh he's that's just like the action he will officially take on his turn okay is there can i like <laughs> grapple and help him on the way down <laughs> i just want to make it so that if he he tries to move he won't you want to grapple him yeah okay yeah, yeah you can you can do Didn't that. he like ready a grapple to grab him if he tried to get up sure you could do that okay i'd like to do that <clears throat> and that'll be it for me <laughs> Stu is the old looming, Yeah, looming over him. I'm ready for this. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll drop my sword and ready this. <clears throat> okay. He kneels. Uh, and looks at you with... With... Uh, like a mix of anger... Um, and also... Sort of awe and surprise. That, like, that... You have made him do this, you know. Disbelief. That's the word I'm looking sure. for. Uh, and he grits his teeth. Um, that's what he has, that's what he spends his action doing. Uh, his his specific intentions are maybe a bit ambiguous. Uh, but you definitely see a mix of of anger, like I said, and also a new respect for what you can do, Quill. And uh, with that, it is your turn. Okay, Quill is going to move back so that if he attacks, so if he, he does break control, that if he comes after again, she'll have time to like cast a spell or someone else can do something. So she'll step back and um, She's just, she looks so disappointed. And uh, there's no one else that's not under control here, right? That she can see? That you can see, no. There are okay. two sleeping fellows and yeah. Um, she'll uh, spend her turn <clears throat> talking and um, she'll say, you are wrong, Moon Eye. Setting myself free of hatred is not choosing someone else's path for me. I can tell you that seeking revenge on what the wrong What do you know of revenge, Moon Eye? I know much of revenge. And doing, seeking revenge, especially on the person who did not harm you directly, he has lifted his sword against me again and again, and he tied me to that post. I know this man. Because he served your mother. Because he had hate in him. You think he is serving her? She is not here. 
and yet he still attacks me again and again. And that's probably all the time I have on my turn. Okay. Avarice rolls her eyes. <laughs> I don't think now is the time for nice platitudes when Quill has had her life threatened and you all stand around talking about the morality of the situation. How about the you make yourself clear. useful, Avarice, and go get our bear friend? That bear is no friend of mine, and neither is this creature right here. And she stares down the the warrior on the ground here. Um, and she looks expectantly at Quill and says, this is a simple equation. Do you want me to help you solve it? Um, a muscle jumps in Quill's face as she, like, because this spell only lasts for one round, so she knows she's losing control of him. And she had wanted to do it herself, but had given herself a moment to talk to Moon Eye instead. And then it's finally, like, all of these, this wash of emotions coming across her face, she'll just give a single nod. Um, okay. She will... Pascal's glaring at Avarice. <laughs> All right. This is, this, this is cool. Um, I will dump the rest of my villain points to let Avarice do this thing. Um, cause I feel like, I feel like that fits. I think Avarice should get to use villain points too. Um, even though she's not Clearly. working against you guys. <laughs> <clears throat> uh, but she'll step up with her her uh, staff of frost that you guys have seen, and uh, she'll start muttering an incantation um, in uh, I think it would be abyssal is the like the devil tongue, and she just steps up, and uh, he's kneeling like looking at her kind a little panicked. Uh, now that anger and that rage is like starting to crack and you see a little bit of panic in his eyes as he looks to Avarice and then back at you, Quill. And Avarice just touches the point of her staff to him and he completely freezes over. And he's just like a frozen statue, just s stuck staring right at you, Quill, with this horrified expression. Bill smiles and relaxes. And uh, these two who saved from fear are, I think, still pretty afraid uh, just because of everything that has happened. Their forces have been scattered. They don't even know where these two guys went. So they're just going to run for it. Two taken off. Did that guy technically die, Tori, mechanically? Not mechanically. <clears throat> okay. Mechanically, he still had a lot more hit points, but I liked this moment of Quill letting Avarice do do a thing. So the effects that trigger on death can't <laughs> be used here, right? Do you want to take his soul? I want to take his shadow. Or his not, shadow, his shadow. Not total yeah. heathen. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I would allow you I would allow you to take his shadow if you would like to. Yeah, I, he's I gonna be it. a little more subtle about it this time. He's glaring at Avarice as she does this. And uh he's just gonna kind of pat the the guy kneeled, right? Yeah, he's frozen, kneeling, staring at Quill. He's just gonna kind of uh pat the frozen shoulder <laughs> and sigh, and his eyes are gonna flare purple, and the shadow's just gonna like shift behind Haskell and replace his own, so he's going to have a much larger shadow behind him. That'll look cool. <laughs> I'm using a mantle of shadow. Yeah, very good. Um, <clears throat> okay, I think we're generally out of combat. Uh, Avarice is going to point out that her banishment only lasts for a minute, uh, but she can point out the exact spots where those warriors will re reappear, so like basically uh, we can set up coup de gras. Yeah, exactly. So I'm going to call that. Unless Moon Eye wouldn't let us. And in that case, we true. can pick up this I... spot next time. That's true. We can we can uh, consider the battle done or if there are specific things that 
would happen one way. They are both still feared, so they would probably run away on their next turn. I see no reason for you to kill them, but it is your choice. Her lack of sight and concern frustrates me and it is she not seems I, to I, search for a word, but she can't quite find it. I have vengeance in my heart too, Quill. Just to make sure it's directed in the right way. Avarice may have done that, but you are the one who drew the blade. <sighs> if you don't want to kill these two, Quill, we can just drag this one over here to where they'll see it, and I'm sure they'll run away like their comrades in arms. I want to leave a note for my mother. Ah, deliver a message, I like it. Yes, they can return it. Excellent idea. Uh, and she'll, pr she'll run back to Tempest. No, Avarice doesn't run. She will <laughs> walk quickly. <laughs> purposefully back to Tempest and retrieve her bag and get you a piece of paper. Who will take it and she'll sit away from the everyone else as she scribes her note, um, giving everyone else time to go and talk to the werebear. Yeah, Haskell will be beckoning the bear over. We're here to save you, by the way. I'll pick up the conversation with the werebear next time. Uh, Quill would, M, would you like a week to think about the note or do you have an idea for what you would like it to say? Or do you want it to be secret? Ooh, all right. Quill will sit for a moment. Her quill pen bleeding a blot onto the page that she had set, intent on just scribing in a fury but the words are evading her for a moment. She draws in a slow breath, the cold air of Icewind Dale settling her, making her feel connected once more to the, her surroundings. And finally, her hand starts to scribe, forms the word mother. I still live and I am coming for you. She seals it. All right, we will end there. Moon and I will head towards our, we can do it next next week, but Moon and I would like to speak to Quill more. Okay, yeah, we can we can pick up right exactly here next week uh, with the werebear and all this stuff. So, but I want to give Em and Chase a break from the sweltering heat. <laughs> Thank you guys for sticking it out with us. We're in a frozen wasteland. <laughs> yeah. Ice wind Dale. Bring some of the cold to Utah, please. Um, <laughs> Thank you guys. Thank you players for being awesome as always. Thanks chat for all the villain points, hero points, fun interactions. Uh, we're, we're starting off on the last few chapters of this module. So don't worry, we still have plenty of sessions to go, but we are we are beginning the the end game slowly yet surely. <clears throat> um, we have tomorrow night the, the fa fall fall of plague stone. Is that what it's called? The fall of plague stone. Fall of plague stone. So tune in tomorrow. That's our Pathfinder Second Edition little mini series we've got going as a warm up for season three of tabletop treasure hunters which we are all super excited for so yes. tune into that wednesday we have defiant right our last yep last we've, session we we've got one more session of defiant which has been very schmexy so far so bring your thirst i guess <laughs> <laughs> and not the children not, <laughs> not the not children, the children. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's so one. some fun some fun content coming your way this week. Uh, so be sure to join us. And also you can go follow us um, obviously here on Twitch and on YouTube where we are uploading all of our old videos and episodes if you need to catch up on Frost Geeks or any of other our, 
any of our other shows. You can also follow us on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. And you can join our Discord if you want to hang out with some of the cool people you saw here in chat or us. You can head over there. People are always putting funny memes, yummy pictures of food, all kinds of stuff. So our go, Discord is so fun. Yeah, hang out with us over there. Uh, you will find that link below and also it's in the chat. So go grab that. And let's see. Oh, you can also support us by purchasing Dyson accessories from um, one of our affiliate partners, Die Hard Dice. We have a monthly discount code, which will give you 10% off of your purchase, which is level one June. So some go check it dice. out. Yeah, get some cool dice and uh, dice trays and that kind of stuff. If you are already doing one or all of those things, we super appreciate it. Thank you guys showing up stream after stream after stream. We just love you. Now, go take a long rest, contemplate the morality of revenge, and we'll catch you next time. Bye. Bye. Bye.